Most view devs have seen code like this before. It's how we can pass a prop to a composable and keep everything reactive. But how does it work? To understand that, we're going to look at exactly how props work and what View's reactivity system is actually doing. And along the way, we'll learn some ways to write better composables that stay reactive and predictable. Let's say we have a basic composable that takes a string ref and gives us the uppercase string using computed. So in our component, we can just create a ref and pass it to our composable. And if we just bind name to an input, our uppercase computed will update whenever name changes. But what if we wanted to call this from a component and use one of its props in our composable? It doesn't work because props.name isn't a ref. We could use two refs to convert it to one, but a better solution is to make our composable smarter by building them to work with different types of inputs. Vue gives us the tools for this. If we replace our ref type with maybe ref or getter, our composable will support plain values, refs, and getter functions, which we can use to access props. Then instead of calling name.value, we can call to value name, which takes all of those different input types and gives us the actual value. And now we have flexibility, the same level of type safety, and reactivity when we need it. So if we pass in a plain value, it works once, and then nothing's reactive. If we use our name ref from our first example, it stays reactive. And even if we pass in a prop with a getter function, the value of uppercase will change with our prop. But now to the main part of the video is why do we need this getter function? I mean, I've always known that we need it to keep props reactive, but what's actually happening under the hood? But first, a word from the sponsor of this video. If you're dealing with localization, Locky is an IDE extension that you have to check out. It really makes working with translations feel like a natural part of your app. You get a preview directly where you're using a translation, you can quickly edit them using a tooltip, and you can also see all the places where this translation key is used. So if you want to make any changes, you're confident you're not messing up other parts of your app. It also has some pretty cool AI features. You can convert static strings into all of your languages, adjust certain translations with a prompt. And I think one of the coolest things is that you can make changes in your native language and all your translation files will get updated. So check it out. All the non-AI features come with a free extension. And if you use the code LearnView, you get an extra 100 free AI requests on top of the free 30. Thanks to Lockheed for supporting the channel. And now let's get back to the video. Basically, a composable is just a function that can contain reactivity. It's not reactive itself. The actual reactivity is in the effects, like computed, watch, or watch effect. And the thing that actually makes these effects reactive is Vue's dependency tracking. Vue's reactivity system depends on when you read a reactive value. Let's imagine we have a simple example with just a ref and a computed. Internally, this ref has two parts, a value and a depth instance which is what actually manages all the reactivity magic. When our computed evaluates and we access name.value, the ref does something like this. But first we call depth.track, and then we return the actual value. And inside track, if we're accessing dot value from inside an effect, which we are with our computed, view will go, all right, the current effect, which is our uppercase computed, depends on this ref. And then it stores that relationship. So when we call name.value from inside our computed, view marks uppercase as a subscriber of name. If we change name.value, our ref will set its value and then call depth.trigger. And this trigger is how name can tell all of its subscribers that its value changed. So if we look at the high level code for ref, the important takeaway is that view can only create that relationship between an effect and its dependencies if we access that reactive value during an effect. So this example won't be reactive because we're reading the value outside of an effect. So when we call name.value and the getter runs, we're not inside of any computed, so track doesn't set up any relationships. Basically in this code, our first variable will just evaluate to a value, and then our computed is basically this, which obviously has no reactivity. And this is the issue with passing props.name directly. We're reading it too early outside of the effect that needs to subscribe to our reactive source. And that's why getters fix this issue. They essentially delay that read until it's inside the reactive context. And since a component's props are reactive, well, technically shallow reactive, accessing them at the right time matters for tracking. So all this behind the scenes can help explain why exactly getter functions work. In practice, it means that on things like watch targets, always use a getter for props, and the same thing with composables, which is why maybe ref or getter and two value are so helpful. And another benefit of this is it means that we'll get type errors if we try to mutate that input value. Since we need to access it with two value, we can't really set it. And even if the composable tries to do something tricky like a two ref, we'll still get a type error. So defaulting to using maybe ref or getter is a good way to make sure your refs can unexpectedly be changed in a composable. But there are some negatives. Since maybe ref or getter also works for the raw value, if we pass in props directly, we can break reactivity without realizing it. Seeing prop 
caps dot in our code is a good indicator that we need a getter. And that's one of the reasons why I've started to be iffy on Vue's relatively new property structuring pattern. While I love the fact that it makes setting default values so much nicer, the destructuring is also just low-key lying. The destructure props is a compiler macro, and wherever we use a destructured prop, the compiler will prefix it with props dot. So if we try using it in something like a watch or composable, it compiles out to this, which doesn't have reactivity. And since we don't have that props dot prefix in our code, it's a lot easier to miss. For watch, the view compiler will throw an error here, but for composable, we won't get an error and we'll have to figure it out one way or another that it doesn't work. A nice quality of life thing if you want to destructure props is to go to your settings for Volar and turn on the props destructuring inlay hints. It allows you to destructure props so you can set default values nicely, but then it also shows you props dot whenever you're actually using it. This makes it a lot clearer when you actually need to be using a getter function, but if you're viewing this code on GitHub or somewhere that doesn't have these hints, this pattern is something to always check for. Let me know if you enjoyed a little bit of a deeper dive on Vue's internals, and I'll see you in the next video.